What does it truly mean to be Austrian? For many, the image conjures alpine landscapes, classical music, and imperial legacies. But when scientists turned their focus to the DNA of modern Austrians, they uncovered something far deeper and far more surprising than just cultural heritage. Beneath the surface of modern Austria lies a complex web of ancestry that reaches back tens of thousands of years, crossing continents, empires, and migrations. At first glance, Austrians may appear genetically similar to other Central Europeans. But genomic studies reveal layers of ancestry that challenge neat national identities. From ancient hunter-gatherers and early European farmers to steppe pastoralists and later waves of Slavic, Roman, and Germanic peoples, the genetic makeup of Austrians is anything but straightforward. One of the most fascinating revelations comes from Austria's position as a crossroads of Europe. Tucked between the west and east, north and south, Austria has absorbed genetic input from Celts, Romans, Bavarians, Huns, Slavs, and even Ottoman link peoples. Modern Austrians carry echoes of these diverse histories, often in surprising proportions. Add to that the genetic legacy of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, a multi-ethnic realm that stretched across much of Central and Eastern Europe, and it becomes clear that Austrian DNA isn't isolated or pure, but profoundly blended. So what does this all mean for Austrian identity? It means that behind the traditions and languages lies a story written in genes, a story of convergence, migration, and change. In this video, we'll explore what cutting-edge genetic studies reveal about Austria's past and present, and how they challenge the way we think about history, heritage, and who we really are. Ready to rethink Austria's roots? Let's dig into the DNA. Long before Austria became a European cultural hub or an imperial center, it was home to some of the earliest human populations in Europe. Archaeological evidence reveals that parts of modern-day Austria were inhabited over 40,000 years ago during the Upper Paleolithic by anatomically modern humans who left behind tools, art, and burial sites that point to a rich early culture. But what does their DNA tell us? Genetic studies of ancient bones found in the region, including in the famous Willendorf area, show that these early inhabitants were closely related to Western European hunter-gatherers. Their genes contribute to the deep ancestry found across modern Europe, but in surprisingly uneven ways. While their genetic legacy is present in today's Austrians, it forms only a small part of the modern genome. Why? Because multiple waves of migration followed. Around 8,000 years ago, the first farmers from Anatolia, modern-day Turkey, moved into Central Europe, bringing with them not just agriculture, but new genes. These Neolithic farmers intermixed with the local hunter-gatherers, creating a genetic blend that marks a major turning point in European population history. In Austria, this resulted in an early fusion of indigenous and Near Eastern DNA, laying a foundational layer of ancestry that still exists in today's population. But the story doesn't stop there. Around 5,000 years ago, yet another wave arrived, this time from the Eurasian steppes. These were the Amnea people, a pastoralist group whose migration brought not only the Indo-European language roots, but also a strong genetic imprint. Their DNA spread rapidly across Europe and now forms a significant part of the Austrian genetic profile. By the Bronze Age, Austria was home to communities that reflected all three major ancestral sources of modern Europeans, Western hunter-gatherers, early Anatolian farmers, and Yamnea steppe herders. These groups didn't just live side by side, they blended over time, both genetically and culturally. This prehistoric mixing created the genetic backbone of the region. When you look at a modern Austrian DNA test, traces of all these ancient people are still there, sometimes buried, sometimes dominant, depending on the region and family history. So, even before the first Celts or Romans set foot in what is now Austria, the land had already seen millennia of human movement and genetic fusion. Austria's deep past isn't just ancient, it's foundational. Before Austria became known for emperors and composers, it was home to dynamic Celtic tribes whose influence still echoes in the land's genetic and cultural fabric. During the Iron Age, roughly between 800 BCE and the Roman conquest in the first century BCE, 
the region we now call Austria was dominated by the Hallstatt and Latin cultures, early Celtic societies named after archaeological sites within Austria and Switzerland. But who were these Celts, and what legacy did they leave behind in the DNA of modern Austrians? The Celts were not a single unified people, but a network of tribal groups that shared linguistic and cultural similarities across vast parts of Europe. In what is now Austria, these tribes, such as the Norisai and Turisai, formed local kingdoms and trading hubs, some of which were among the earliest to work with iron and salt in large-scale industries. Their reach stretched far beyond the Alps, and genetic evidence reveals a population with strong Western and Central European roots. Modern genetic analysis shows that Celtic populations in Austria carried a complex blend of ancestries. The earlier hunter-gatherer, Anatolian farmer, and steppe herder components were all present, but in slightly different proportions than in neighboring regions. These Celts didn't just preserve ancient DNA. They also introduced new cultural practices, burial customs, and technological innovations. Then came the Romans. By the first century BCE, Rome had expanded into Central Europe, absorbing the Celtic tribes into its growing empire. The province of Naricum, which covered much of modern-day Austria, became an important Roman territory. Roman roads, forts, and towns sprang up, and Latin began to influence local languages. But what did this mean genetically? Interestingly, the Roman Empire was not genetically Italian, in a narrow sense. Soldiers, administrators, and settlers came from all over the empire, North Africa, the Middle East, Gaul, Iberia, and the Balkans. As they moved through Naricum, they left behind more than roads, they left descendants. Genetic studies show an increase in southern and eastern Mediterranean DNA elements during the Roman period, reflecting this multi-ethnic influx. These lineages didn't erase Celtic ancestry, but layered over it, adding to Austria's growing genetic complexity. By the time the Roman Empire began to crumble in the 5th century, the people of Austria were already a genetic blend of ancient Europeans, Celts, and a vast range of Roman-linked populations. The seeds of modern Austrian diversity had already been sown. With the fall of the Western Roman Empire in the 5th century CE, a new wave of migrations reshaped the genetic landscape of Central Europe, including what is now Austria. These movements, often described as the barbarian invasions, brought Germanic tribes, such as the Bavarians, Alamanni, Lombards, and others into the region. But far from being chaotic hordes, these were structured societies on the move, often seeking new homelands amid the collapsing Roman world. The Bavarians, in particular, would leave the most enduring legacy in Austria. Originally settling in the area around modern-day Bavaria, they gradually expanded into the eastern Alpine regions. Genetic evidence shows a clear influx of Central and Northern European lineages during this time, often associated with so-called Germanic haplogroups like I1 and certain subgroups of R1b. These replaced or diluted some of the earlier Roman-era Mediterranean signals in the gene pool. However, assimilation was not a one-way process. These newcomers absorbed aspects of the local Celtic and Romanized populations, both culturally and genetically. Intermarriage was common, and archaeological records show a continuity of some settlement patterns and technologies, suggesting gradual integration rather than total upheaval. By the early medieval period, a more cohesive ethnic identity began forming, one that combined Germanic roots with a complex heritage from earlier Celtic and Roman peoples. This fusion laid the foundation for the development of the early medieval duchy of Bavaria and, eventually, the eastern frontier known as the Ostmark, the origin of the word Austria. Today's Austrian DNA reflects this blend. The Germanic migrations added a strong north-central European component to the mix, but they didn't erase what came before. Instead, they layered on new ancestries, just as the Romans and Celts had done in earlier times, making Austria one of Europe's most genetically diverse and historically rich regions. In the early medieval period, a new chapter in Austria's genetic and cultural history began, one written by the Slavs. Between the 6th and 8th centuries CE, waves of Slavic-speaking peoples moved westward from what is now Ukraine and Belarus, spilling into Central Europe. 
while many settled in the Balkans or further east, a significant number found their way into eastern Austria, particularly in regions like Carinthia and Styria. Genetic studies show clear traces of this movement. Mitochondrial DNA and Y chromosome markers associated with Slavic populations, especially haplogroups like R1A, appear in modern Austrians at noticeable frequencies, especially in the East and South. This suggests not just a fleeting migration, but a sustained presence and integration into the broader population. The Slavs didn't remain isolated. Over time, they intermarried with the existing Bavarian and Romanized Celtic populations. Place names in eastern Austria still bear linguistic evidence of Slavic origins, and some ancient Slavic customs survived in local traditions. Even today, the Corinthian Slovenes, an officially recognized minority in Austria, are descendants of these early Slavic settlers. The Frankish Empire eventually extended its control over this region, pushing many Slavic communities further south or east. Others assimilated, adopting Germanic languages and customs over centuries. Yet, the genetic imprint of this period endures, revealing that Austria's past wasn't shaped solely by Western or Northern movements. It also absorbed substantial influence from the East. Thus, Austria stands at a unique crossroads in European genetics, where Latin, Germanic, and Slavic ancestries all converge. The Slavic migrations serve as a reminder that the country's identity has always been dynamic, shaped by movements from all directions, and by peoples whose stories have often faded into the background of history. Austria's genetic history is not just a tale of major migrations. It's also shaped by smaller, often marginalized communities whose contributions have left a deep but sometimes hidden legacy. Among these are Jewish and Romani populations, both of which have resided in Austria for centuries and brought unique genetic and cultural threads into the national fabric. The Jewish presence in Austria dates back at least to Roman times, but grew more significantly during the medieval and early modern periods. Genetic studies of Ashkenazi Jews, who made up the majority of Austria's Jewish population, reveal a blend of Middle Eastern, Southern European, and Eastern European ancestry. Although historically segregated, some intermarriage and assimilation occurred over time, especially in urban centers like Vienna, leaving subtle genetic traces in the broader Austrian population. The Romani people, often referred to as gypsies, arrived in Central Europe from northern India around a thousand years ago. In Austria, they formed tight-knit communities, preserving their language and culture despite persistent discrimination. Genetic research confirms their South Asian roots, but also shows admixture with local European populations, reflecting centuries of movement and intermarriage. Their contribution to Austria's diversity, though often overlooked, is real and significant. Other minorities have also left their mark. The Ottoman incursions brought temporary and sometimes permanent settlement of Balkan Muslims. Migrant workers from Bohemia, Hungary, and Italy moved into Austria in different historical periods, each adding new elements to the gene pool. These minority threads remind us that Austria has never been genetically or culturally monolithic. Even groups that were marginalized or persecuted have helped shape the DNA and the identity of modern Austrians. The nation's genetic tapestry is not just a product of major empires and migrations, but also of communities that thrived quietly on the margins. Modern genetic studies of Austrians reveal a rich and layered ancestry, shaped by centuries of migration, empire, and cultural exchange. Using advanced tools like genome-wide analysis, researchers have been able to trace the deep roots and surprising diversity within Austria's population. At the broadest level, Austrians today exhibit a genetic profile that is typically Central European, similar to neighboring Germans, Czechs, and Northern Italians. This reflects long-standing shared history, especially under the Habsburg Empire. But dig deeper, and more distinct signals emerge. For example, Austrians carry markers from early Indo-European steppe migrations, Neolithic farmers from Anatolia, and Western European hunter-gatherers, all of which form the foundational genetic makeup of most Europeans. However, regional differences exist. Western Austria, closer to Switzerland and Bavaria, shows more Alpine and Germanic traits. 
eastern regions, particularly near the borders of Hungary and Slovenia, reveal genetic input from Slavic and even Turkic populations due to centuries of interaction and conquest. Importantly, studies also detect traces of Jewish, Romani, and Balkan ancestries, sometimes at low frequencies, but enough to challenge the idea of a singular Austrian identity. Urban centers, like Vienna, having been crossroads of trade and culture, show higher levels of admixture. Modern Austrian DNA tells a story of convergence, of peoples and cultures blending over millennia. It emphasizes that Austrian identity, like most national identities, is not based on purity or homogeneity, but on complexity, adaptation, and shared history. The insights from modern genetic studies urge a re-evaluation of what it means to be Austrian. Far from a fixed or homogeneous lineage, Austrian identity emerges as a tapestry woven from countless threads, ancient migrations, imperial diversity, regional interactions, and modern mobility. For centuries, national narratives have emphasized language, culture, and history to define belonging. Yet, DNA adds another layer to this understanding. It reveals that Austria has always been a meeting point of Celts, Romans, Germanic tribes, Slavs, and beyond. It shows how identities form not from isolation, but from fusion. This genetic perspective doesn't erase cultural pride or national cohesion. Instead, it deepens it by showing how resilience, adaptability, and openness have been central to Austria's story. In a world where borders shift, but human movement is constant, the Austrian genome is a living archive of survival and synthesis. Ultimately, embracing this complexity can foster a more inclusive sense of identity, one that values shared roots and the beauty of difference. Genetics doesn't define who we are, but it does remind us that we are all connected and that nations, like people, are shaped by journeys, not walls.